Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you how to add some beams of light in your photos. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in Paris but right now in the US. I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw files of this episode and all the past episodes. We are talking more than 200 raw files for free. All you have to do is accept to receive newsletters from me and you will get access to this free stuff. Click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, for the first time, I did a challenge on sunset into the wild photography. We had over 300 entries and I tried to use this as an opportunity to give you some tips on compositions, on lights, and you know how to make this landscape um, be very nice in some way. I hope you like this, it's just my opinion, but I think people uh, kind of like this. Check it out. This week, I'm gonna show you how to add a beam of light on your photo. You know that more you complexify the light, nicer is your photography. Well, we can do this in Photoshop. This is a, more, a bit more of an advanced tutorial on Photoshop, but you will find it useful on your portraits if you want to make some really, really dramatic portraits. So let me show you how. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So today I want to talk to you about lights and rays of light. I'm working on a, a lot of compositing work these days, you know, taking somebody in the studio or um, with flash outside the end, but, you know, mixing with a different background and you know, just playing around with Photoshop. And I want to show you uh, uh, a way you can add rays of lights in your photos or you can, you know, just add different lights. So I'm just starting, this is a composite. He was taking the studio and added in his background. I just want to add a little bit of light on him. And I want to show you a couple of ways you can do that. First, I'm going to create an empty layer in Photoshop. So, I mean, to follow along, you have to have some basis of, of Photoshop because, you know, it's not like a complete introduction to Photoshop, I would say. So um, then you go in this tool here on the polygon tool. And here up here on sides, you put in three. So when you click, it's gonna create a polygon with three sides, basically, okay? And um, so I, what I'm gonna do now is then use this tool, uh, sorry, this tool, which is the direct selection tool. So with the uh, direct selection tool, you can click here on each side and move it. And I wanna fill this with white, actually. I want this like, uh, uh, imagine, actually, this would be something like this. This is my light, uh, light source usually goes like this. And I um, want to make it big, like, a, like if there was some light coming on. Now, right now it's in black. So right now it's a polygon layer. So I'm going to right click and rasterize that layer so it becomes a, a, a you know an actual pixel layer. Then we'll press on command. I'm going to click here. So it's going to select the light of the light source. And I'm going to go to edit, fill, and white all i want is it to be white okay then i'm going to lower the opacity of that so it looks like more light ray press command d to unselect but it's still it's not very natural at least you could say so i'm going to go to filter blur gaussian blur and i'm going to gaussian blur this a lot like something around yeah 58 88 something it's something like that maybe even more yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, no. All right, yeah, 97 is kind of, is cool. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer by clicking here. And then I'm going to press Command T. And I'm going to use this corner, make this corner smaller, make this color smaller. I just want to get an inner light. Like I want to get the inside of that light to be a little bit stronger. You can also hold on the Alt key, which is going to make the whole thing smaller. And then just, you know, what I'm trying to do is just to... Uh, make the inside uh, a bit smaller. You can also use a command key to uh, to uh, move the, the little corners exactly how you want it. So let me show you the before and after. So it's just like I have a center light that is a bit stronger. Same thing, I'm gonna do some Gaussian blur on it because it's still too visible, maybe not 100, but like, something like this, like 44 or something. Okay, but it still kind of looks a bit strange to me because it's still, you know, 
it's still not uh, very, very nice. So one thing that I want to do now is take these two layers and melt them together with Command E. Command E is going to make them both become one layer. So we just have one layer, which is the light, uh, you know, which I can make bigger or smaller, uh, above our character. Next thing I want to do, and that's the key point, I'm going to create a mask. And in that mask, so I'm on the mask, not on the photo, I'm going to go to Filter, I'm going to go to Render, Clouds. And what that's going to do is that it's going to, if I press Shift, you will see what's inside my mask. Uh, I'm sorry, Alt, if you press Alt, that's my mask. You see, when I press Alt on it, I can see my mask. So my mask is just cloud. So now the light is kind of like, uh, you know, becoming uh, just little, uh, basically cloudy light. It's not anymore such a big light, but it's a bit too much. So what you can do is unlock this, make sure you're still on the, on the, on the mask. Okay, zoom out a lot so that your photo is very small. Press Command T, and now I'm gonna, holding the Alt key, I'm gonna make my mask become bigger. This way my clouds are gonna be, become bigger, and it's gonna be a bit more realistic. You see, be, before the mask, after the mask. It just makes my source of light a bit more random. Okay, but here it's kind of weird there, so what I can do is just take a big black brush, making sure it's 100% hardness and it's black in the foreground and like uh, opacity around 37. And I'm just gonna, oops, sorry, the hardness was 100%, I want it to be zero. So let's undo that, Command Z, Command Alt Z to go back several steps. Oops, Command Z to go back, okay. And I'm just gonna, no, oh my God. Let me just go to the history here. I'm gonna go to view, Windows history, if you want to go back several steps and I just want to go back before the brush step, so here, okay. There I am, I'm gonna put my history in that window. Okay, back on my channel, uh, sorry, on my layers. So I'm just gonna erase this a little bit, maybe here, uh, so that it's more focused on our character here. Okay, perfect. So now this is the first thing. So the, the trick it is adding smoke in a mask is just gonna make the whole thing a bit more real. Okay, I'm gonna maybe lower a little bit the opacity of the overall mask. And then I'm gonna turn this, um, I'm gonna turn this into a group. And you will understand why in a second. So I'm gonna just press actually Command J and make this into a group that we're gonna call Light uh, Front. Okay, then I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna call this light behind. And what I wanna do is create a mask on that group. So I'm gonna create a mask and I wanna mask out uh, him. But I already have a selection of him, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna to go to my channel. I already have a selection, Command T. So he's selected here. Back to layers. And I'm just gonna, so I'm on the mask on the group and I'm gonna to go to edit, fill, because I have an active selection with black. So now, and command D to undo. So now that light behind is that light is only affecting behind him. So this is the, basically the front light, and this is the behind light. So I can you know I can make the front light maybe uh, uh, the the light in front a bit less strong. And this way we've got more volume. One light behind, one light in front. Okay. So pretty easy to do if you know, if you follow my ISO tutorials on how to make extractions. Okay, so now we've got the lights and I wanna do a, like one final thing to make even more dramatic lighting on, on top of that. So I'm gonna create a mask, sorry, a layer, which is gonna take into account all we've done so far by pressing Command, Alt, Shift, E. Okay, and that on that layer, I'm gonna go to Filter, Render, Lighting Effects. Now, since Photoshop CC came out, the lighting effects is amazing because before it used to be a complete unusable small windows. Now you've got a good windows with a, a, a real time. It's really fast, you can see what it's doing. So I'm gonna position that light exactly where it, where it is. Now, as you can see, it's too dark. To bring back some of the ambience that was there, you can just use the ambience slider and it's gonna bring back the ambience that was already there. And I usually like to, uh, to use different lights. I can put a bit more intensity on this one. And then just the key point is really the ambience and the intensity, okay? 
And what I like to do is you have three types of light. I'm going to add some more of this type of lights, but I just want to make them, uh, you know, a bit this way, maybe a bit more, add a bit of intensity. And I love it because it's really rendering in real time. So I'm going to add a third one, which I'm just going to take this and play around and put somewhere like this and make it a little bit bigger. All right. Make this a little bit bigger and and this is really a trial and error process. Okay, something's wrong with this light. It's making a weird shadow, so I'm going to I'm going to make it further. I'm going to take this and make it bigger so it's more subtle. But I'm just trying to add drama here, like real drama. And you can jump from one light to the, to the other, you know, and just that's one light and you can play around with this and this will put more or less intensity, you know. And I'm just trying to get, go for a dramatic effect, you know, drama, like drama. More complex is your light going to be, more drama it is going to be. Okay, that seems kind of cool. Uh, let me maybe add a bit of ambience on this one, just a little bit. Okay, and let's press OK. And let's see, before, after. It totally changed the feeling. Now, because it's on its own layer, I can lower the opacity and, you know, bring it like I want. But this is what I was going for, you know, the sort of before and after. And if you want to see the before and after from the beginning, you can go to the basic layer and press with the Alt key on the eye. It's going to turn off all the other layer and put it back before, after, before, after. You know, so we have a lot of light style going on. Of course, I can, you know, I can add another layer on this. And this is usually what I do that I put into an overlay mode. And then I take a big brush, I make that brush around 10%. And now I can dodge and burn even further. So when it's white, white is going to add some light. And black, if I press X and come to black, black is going to add some black in. So if I want to make this even darker, I could. I press X and add some light here, I could, you know. So I can direct even more the light, making sure it's really on him. I, I was going for a little atmosphere thing, but you know, Playing around with the clouds in the, in the mask and playing around with, uh, you know, doing the lights. I wanted to show you this to you because it's, it's, it just adds a lot of more drama. I'll show you again the before and after. So that's really like more Photoshop tricks. Now, one thing you can do is take everything that you've done so far and press Command J to put everything in a group. And then again, you can just lower the opacity of that group if you think it's over the top or bring it back slightly. You know, it's just a matter of taste. but. This is the idea of how you can create atmospheric type of light when you have a character playing. And you know, as I said, I can uh, I can get the light that's behind in front of him. Uh, well, actually not anymore because now I have that layer. That layer has been, uh, it has all the data, but before I melted, you know, before I blended all the layers, I could have played around with the light behind the light in front. You get the, you get the idea. Okay, I hope this is not too advanced or too fast for you. But play around with trying to add beams of light in your landscape when you have like a horse or something going on. Sometimes you will find some nice, uh, nice uh, playground, nice things to do. Yeah, I'm going to lower the opacity and I think I'm going to end up with that. I kind of like the atmosphere of that photo. Okay, guys, hope uh, you have fun with playing with uh, light beams. And before I leave you, I just want to show you a new course that I have done called Artistic Still Life Photography with the amazing Jean-Michel Bertz. Here is a little trailer that explains what that course is all about. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Today I'm happy to announce that I have a new course coming out with my buddy Jean-Michel Bertz called Artistic Commercial Photography. What it is, is we're going to shoot two scenes using just one light and very simple, very cheap gear. First, we're going to go for a little Dutch painting with fruits and make it really look like one of these old nice Dutch paintings where they had an amazing lighting on it. That's the before and that's the after. Then we are going to do some flowers, but some really nice flowers and create the background, create the illusion that the flowers were there. It's a complete composite in Photoshop. Here is the before shot and this is the final result. It is one of the courses where I learned the most Photoshop tricks. So really check it out, artistic commercial photography. Wow.